letter goes out, goes crazy. And then I have all black people know I wrote it, no white people know I wrote it. White people are looking for the guy that wrote this letter because every black person in the music business is sharing it. Like, you white friends, you need to read this letter. So I have all these people looking for me. Like, who wrote the letter? Who, who's anonymous? So they figured out it was me. So then I get on the phone with this lawyer, and she's like, yeah, you know, I'm a fucking, they're not going to play with you. I'm going to tell them you wrote the letter, but you have to stand on it. You are the, like, black people are like, you are the voice of us, of them, because she was a white woman. She said, but you have to stand on it. So I said, I never, not, I didn't have a problem standing on it in the first place. I don't care. So she calls the guys at Warner and tell them I wrote the letter. They was like, oh, because everybody was trying to figure out who wrote it. She was like, they was like, our guy wrote it. I'm like, it's not a bad thing. I'm just telling you the black experience. So anyway, man, white people are so passive aggressive. And that's my problem. I, the letter, I wrote the letter a year into my contract at Warner. Well, I don't want to say the company. At the last company I was in. I, I was a year into my contract when I wrote the letter. They were, they held on to the fact that I wrote that letter. And when it was time for my contract to be renewed, they fucked me. Yo, this video is sponsored by Los Hermanos. And it's crazy because I always wanted to have a uh, tequila sponsorship. So shout out to my guys over at Los Hermanos for taking a shot with me, doing this partnership thing. I really appreciate it. Listen, I like it so much, I might just be worse than uh, Rick Ross, bro. So if you see me on the gram posting it all over my story and my gram, don't say nothing. Just go ahead and buy a bottle. I got it by the case. So look, we got the Blanco. We also got the Repo. And you know, my favorite is in Yeho, right? We got it on the way. You know, like I said, we got it by the case, man. So listen, if you in Delaware, you in Georgia, you in Maryland, you in New York, you in Jersey, make sure you go to the nearest liquor store and ask for some Los Hermanos. Hey, my guys. Because, I mean, like you said, the mob do hate all the greats. Think about it. Tom Brady. Niggas hated Tom Brady. Kobe Bryant. Niggas yeah. hated Kobe Bryant until he passed, until he passed away. Uh, everybody that was great, people hated him. But at the same time, I can't. I don't want to say that, because that's, the, I feel like that's the, the, the we know that, but yep. don't give him nothing to hate, to actually hate, like Tom Brady, right, he was just great, niggas just hated on his game, Kobe Bryant, he was just great, people just hated on his game, but people like Diddy and R. Kelly, you, like, you gave him something to hate, like, if it's a regular person or not, like, if, if that's if that's who you are, like you said, you said I put on a glasses because that's 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 my character. I, exactly. I don't care about glasses. When exactly. I go home, I do what I want to do. Exactly. If you go home and you beat on your wife, that's disgusting. Like that's just disgusting. Exactly. You know what I'm saying? Like I don't know. Like that shit, bro. That's some weird. Like I don't know, bro. Like that's some. We ready? Oh man. Well, we 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 got all that. We good? Oh, why not then? Let go. Well, uh, man. What's poppin' everybody? Your boy, Mr. J Hill, J Hill Podcast. We in the building. I, I already started some of the conversation. Uh, one of the biggest music music executives is in the building. I mean, this guy has worked with uh shit, damn near everybody. Like, mm -hmm. I can't, I don't even want to try to go through the names. I'm, I know I'm a slur it. Uh Lizzo, Molly Cyrus, uh, bro, it's 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 crazy. You gonna see the name under underneath the YouTube anyway, so you know who here. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Ray Daniels is in the building. What up, brother? Me. Thanks for having me, brother. I appreciate you for pulling up, man. Sure, man. I love what you're doing, man. I I, I owed you this, by the way, I, and I appreciate you following up. Like, no, ain't, ain't you just thing, you just get it. When a nigga get it, I like it. No, ain't a thing. Yeah. I um I actually said I uh I wanted to do this one a little different. Like usually I I'm I I dive in heavy on my my research for sure. With you, I didn't go too heavy. I probably yeah. watched one. Or two I, I, by the way, I like that. Yeah, like I, I like, I like, I like discovery. Mm. Like I like to discover on my own, and I think most humans do. They hate when you tell them what to do. They just rather you tell them what you did, and then they say, "Man, I might do that." <laughs> <laughs> but if you tell them what to do, they're like, "You can't boss me around." But you tell them, "Look, man, I did this." I'm like, mm. "I'm gonna do that." But yeah, I like, I like. I'm a discovery person. Like, don't tell me the story. Let me, let me, let me discover it for myself. So mm. I appreciate that. But part of that, though, I'm gonna be honest with you, because the couple interviews that I did watch, it made me a fan. I'm gonna be straight up with you and sure. the audience. Be transparent. At first, I wanted to interview because you Ray Daniels. Mm -hmm. Be honest, like it's Ray Daniels, somebody I need on my show for sure. Right? As I was doing the interview, as I was doing the prepping for the interview, I started becoming a fan. Thank you. 
And one of the things that that uh that stood out to me was you said a couple of things. You was like, man, I never really gave people a reason to 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 do me foul. Like I always was good to people. Yes. That was one. And I think it was a time where you just started. You was working with an artist, I forgot his name. And I guess his mom's was like, like yeah. you got him a deal and his mom's. Got him a deal. Like, and his mom's like, nigga, you ain't do nothing. Yeah, you ain't. And do I nothing. did everything. Yeah, yeah. But I I don't and this is why I was confused. I didn't know if it was the same artist, but it was maybe the same artist or another artist was like, man, they understood the impact that you that you had on that career and they gave you 50%. Was that the same? Well, artist? same situation, but it wasn't the same artist. So what happened was, was that I had my artist that I was working with and I wound up taking him to uh, uh, to the guy. And the guy was like, you know, like I live in Atlanta, he live in New York and he was like, yo, look, you get the music right, I get him a deal. That's all I need to hear. So I got the music right. And it wasn't like first try. Like I remember driving to New York. I'm driving to New York to play him two songs mm. and drive right back to Atlanta. Like that's the energy I was on. I needed it that bad. And you know, when I when the deal came and you know, he was like, yo, you gotta get your paperwork cause you know you're gonna get paid from this from him. And I'm like, cool. Then I went to him and he was like, well, my mom wanna talk to you. I knew that was bullshit already. Mm. Cause he was grown, he was 22, 23. And he's like, my mom wanna talk to you. So I'm like, all right. And we talked to his mom and she was, and the mom was like so disrespectful. Like, what did you do? And I'm like, he ain't, he been living with me for two years. Like, what do you think he's, how you think we've been surviving? So anyway, I, I remember she was like, well, we'll give you 5%. And I called the guy and I was like, yo, oh man, I'm sorry. I don't know what that is. That's my, that's, that's, that has nothing to do with you. That's my, I'm a diabetic. So they just tell me my sugar low. That's no, nothing. It's not really low. It's just, I gotta figure out a way to turn this thing off. But yeah, um, her mother, so yeah, his mother was like, well, what do you do? And I'm like, well, I did everything. And he didn't say nothing. I called the guy and I was like, man, they only giving me 5%. And he was like, what? And he just bust out laughing, like laughing. It's like, I'm like, I'm broke. Like I live with, a, I'm living with chicks. I'm tired. Mm. I did all this work, and he was like, "Welcome to the music business. You got to. You can't come in unless you get your heart broke. Your heart's broken. So my heart's broken." He was like, "Don't worry about it. I'm gonna give you half my money." Mm -hmm. So, cause he said, "You did everything. You did all the work. All he did was walk me in the room and say, this is my artist.' But every song, how we got there, was all me. So I always say, like, give it your best, and and know that God is gonna reward you the way you're supposed to be rewarded, no matter what. Like, I'm a I'm a believer in God." I'm a follower of God, and I'm, I know that no man can take from me what he has from me. So instead of focusing on what man can do or not do to me, I focus on what I do best, and that's how I live my life. And mm. it works out for the most part. Yeah, and, and, and you telling that story, I instantly became a fan. Yeah, I appreciate that. Well, well, you know, I, my thing is I want us to, uh, like, I just met you, right? We've been knowing each other for a little over a year now. Bro, I don't know nothing about you, but I, I'm pretty sure you love your family. And for me, when I see a black man, I want to make sure that he's loving his family and he's taking care of them the way we're supposed to. Mm. And the only way I could do that is by telling you everything that I know, mm. everything that I've experienced, everything that is, because life is our greatest teacher. And some of us need to hit our head on the wall, but some of us need, need to see the next person hit their head and be like, no, nah, I'm going to do it a different way. Mm -hmm. So for me... Man, I'm, I can remember it vividly, bro. Like wanting to be in the music business, being broke, like just like feeling not, not feeling sorry for myself, but kind of like, damn, I I, like I'm a good person, bro. Like yeah. I just want to help my family. And I remember praying, and I was like, God, man, if you get me to where I want to go, I promise I won't be a fuck nigga. Mm. I promise if I know the right door to go into, I'm gonna tell you. If I know the right. If I know the right answer, I'm gonna tell you. And if you don't listen, that's cool. I still did God's work though. And to me, that's how I live my life. Like, I live my life being as pure as I can be, being as loving as I can be, and being as good as I can be to people I encounter. And once, like I said, go back to what I told you earlier about the character. Like, I have theories on life. Like, most of us is like, this is going to sound, I just give it to you. So the way I look at the world is, is that 90, so you know they always focus on the 3%. They always talk about the 3%, like the top 3% of America. Well, my theory is, is that 97% of America is givers and takers. Mm. They give and take according to the scenario and they reason with themselves. The other 3% are takers or givers. And that's why they're rich, because they know exactly who they're going to be no matter what. And some people might think being a taker is wrong, being a giver is wrong. But I'll give you an example of two very successful men, 
One's a giver, one's a taker. They're both successful. They both got to the top of the mountain. Donald Trump and Barack Obama. Barack Obama's a giver. He's here to help. Anyway, I can help you, I can help you. Trump's taking. He don't care. I'm taking. They both successful. They both in the top 1% of the world. They both became one of the 45 men to run this world, run this country. They did all of that. Doing it their way. Trump is who he is. He's not who he needs to be. He is exactly who he is. Grab him by the pussy. What, that, what does Trump say? Every other politician, any politician in the world would have said, I'm sorry. Trump said, that's how men talk when y'all ain't around. Mm -hmm. And everybody said, he's right. That is how men talk when women aren't around. We talk crazy. We say dumb shit. Women do too. So my point is, is that you just got to know who you are. So I decided that I'm going to be a giver. Mm. And that's my role. So anybody I see, I give them game. I give them, like, I don't give a damn what it is. I want to help. Because I'm a giver. And sometimes being a giver ain't fun when you run into a whole lot of, a, a, a row full of takers. But I have to remember that I made an agreement with myself and God that this is who I'm going to be. I'm going to be a giver. Now, I'm not going to let you pimp me. I'm not going to let you take my house because I want to give it to you. But I'm saying I can, I'm going to give as much as I physically can give. And if you do something with it, you do something with it. I mean, you wouldn't believe how many people I made rich. You wouldn't believe how many people come to me and say, yo, when you told me that, that changed my life. That's what I'm here for. We are all on the yellow brick road of life, trying to find our Wizard of Oz. To tell us that we, to give us something that we already have inside of us. I'm just on, I'm just on the yellow brick road. I'm going to stop. I'm like, yo, Jay, you don't need that. You got it. That's all, because that's all life's about. It's, that's what the Wizard of Oz is about. It's about a journey in life, looking for something that's already in you. And what you didn't realize is the thing you was looking for is what got you to the Wiz. Mm. You, needed, you wanted a heart. It took heart to get there. Mm -hmm. You wanted a brain. It took a brain to get there. He knows that. He also knows that if I'm sitting in the couch like this, you're not going to believe I'm great. So he gets in the machine and talks down. How are you? But he already know he had a heart because you got to him. It's the game. That's what life's about. They're telling us all we missing something that's in us. I'm just here to tell you it's in you. That's why I tell everybody it's in you. You just gotta, you just gotta believe it's in you and go for it. And that's the superhero work I'm trying to do. That's how I'm trying to give. Yo, it's crazy. You just said so much, and um, like it's funny because even like you believe in God, I believe. In sure. God. And even when um, cause you're right. He, he knew how the world was going to be designed because he designed it. Mm -hmm. So much so that when Jesus came down, mm -hmm. he knew he had to die for us to save us and mm -hmm. to die for our sins because he knew we he wouldn't were. recognize him as the flesh and blood. Yep. Because he looked like us. They called yep. him uh they called him a liar. They called yeah. him <laughs> like they called they they said that he he was practicing um I forgot the word, but saying he he's not really healing people. Yeah, he, exactly. You know what I'm saying? And, and, yeah. And they crucified him, right? So, like, you absolutely right. My question was going to be, uh, you said something about knowing who you want to be. Yep. Like, knowing who you want to be. It's a two-part question. Yep. At what moment in your life, you can give me an age or a milestone that you remember, at what moment in your life did you come to the realization of, I need to know who I want to be? And then the second part of that question is, what made you have the understanding that you wanted to be a giver? And when was that? So the first that's a, part. That's a, good, that's a good question. Um, I didn't know. If I'm being honest with you, bro, I still don't know what I want to be. But you know you want to be a giver. You know I that know you I are. am a giver. Yeah. But I don't, what I mean by that is that I know who I am. I don't know the destination. Mm. I know the direction, but I don't know the destination. I don't think Jay-Z, 50 Cent, I don't think those guys knew how rich they were going to be. I think they knew they wanted to be rich, but it's kind of like, what's my limit? Like, can I get to, can I get to the sky? Man, maybe I might just get to the top of a building. Are you gonna be happy with the top of the building or are you gonna need to get to the sky? So my only thing is I just focus on going up. And I knew I wanted to be a giver because if you don't, bottom line is this, most of the time we're losing because we're chasing. That's why I mean giving and taking. Giving, okay, I'm gonna come give. Now I'm, I'm gonna go run and take. I don't work like that. I just do my best. I woke up and I said, I'm just gonna give. And I'm gonna sit in the same seat and I'm gonna give. And I'm not gonna go 
a uh, uh, hundred miles out of my out of my uh, uh, comfort zone to give to you. I'm just gonna give you. I'm gonna stay in the same place. Like we're in your podcast. You built this. That's why I'm here. You built something. That's that's how I look at this. Like like I'm doing it. I'm just gonna be the person. Like I can't believe I'm in the middle of the greatest social experiment of all time in my mind. I can't believe that. Once I turned the switch on and said, this is who I'm going to be, the doors open. Mm -hmm. Like, it's so amazing because it's like most of the time you want the doors open and then you turn the switch. I turned the switch. Once you turn the switch, you make a promise, can't go back. Mm -hmm. So you basically got to make the switch before you even know to go back. And then once you make the switch, it's like, I'm committed. Like I said, bro, you won't believe how many people I've had in my life that I knew was taken from me. And I still let them. I'm a giver. You ever seen the movie um, Coming to America? I always, by the way, I always refer, I always refer, reference movies and music because those movies and the the characters in those movies and the artists that were singing the songs were my heroes. They weren't just my heroes. They were my, they were my moral compass. They were my, they were my example of what the world is. So I give an example. Coming to America. I mean, not coming to America. I'm sorry. Trading Places. There's a scene in Trading Places. With Eddie Murphy's character, Richie Valentine, he get, the white guys take him to the house. And they say, this is your house. And he's like, this is my house? And he's like, this is your house. And that's your butler. And this is your bed. And he's like, so this is mine. So, I see, every time they look, so that's mine. And every time they look away, he puts something in his pocket. That's mine too. They look away, he puts something in his pocket. And it was because he didn't believe. Mm. So they start taking out his pocket. Hey, take this out. This is yours. You're stealing from yourself. Then he goes... Well, I mean, I ain't gonna lie, I believe y'all, because you know, this type of stuff happens to me every day. Then they had to hit him like, damn. He does that's he doesn't believe. Good stuff that's supposed to happen to him. So once he bit into once he bought into it, he committed to it. He wasn't a bad person no more. He wasn't out there scamming or asking people for money. He was focused on being great because all he needed was a damn opportunity. And to me, that's how I look at this. Like, sometimes we just need an opportunity. So I'm gonna create it. But you gotta believe it. Like, how do you, like, I had a whole lot of money. I, I, I had like 400K in crypto before, at this peak. And then at its worst, it might have been like 130,000. Not 100,000, 120,000. So I remember leaving it in crypto and I was like, man, I'm waiting for crypto to go back up. Remember that? I was like, man, when crypto go back up, I'm going to get up. I'm like, but Ray, do you believe in you? You believe in all these other crypto wallets, but do you believe in yourself? Because you got money sitting right there, and why would you leave it there when you can go invest it in your business? So I sold everything, except for one Bitcoin. And I sold it all. I was like, you know what, let me just have that. And I invested in myself. I don't know what I did with the money, but I know that every time I'm, I'm, I show God that I'm willing to try, he opens another door for me. But I got to show him I'm willing to try first before I ask him to open the door. And I think that that's how the world works. And I think most people lose because they're waiting to take but were you always like that? You had to, because uh, like hindsight, hindsight is twenty twenty, right? Mm -hmm. So it's, it's like you have so much wisdom. Now. Yeah. So it's easy to look on, look at things and be like, man, this is how I am. I, while, while I was living it, I was still narrating it. While I was living it, I was narrating it. Because what I mean by that is like, like I said, I'm going to make this change to see what happens. And I ain't going to lie, it's scary. I ain't gonna lie, bro. It's scary. But when was that though? When you said, I'm, I'm, "What change was it?" What, what so what happened? Was, okay, so what happened was uh, I worked <laughs> at Warner. I don't even want to say their name, but I worked at a record label, and you know I've always been great at what I do. Uh, but the George Floyd thing happened, and that was like that changed my life because when George Floyd happened, that was the first time that white people were like really like sensitive to black people, like. Mm -hmm. Damn, that's what y'all been dealing with all this time? It's like, yes, <laughs> y'all just had to see it. That's why the most powerful uh, the thing ever created was a camera. Mm -hmm. It's the most powerful tool ever created. It's more powerful than anything in the world because a camera is going to change this world. Look what happened with Puff. Mm. He said he didn't do it. <laughs> Everybody getting better. As soon as you saw it on camera, it changes everything because I see it. So, so for me, I wrote this letter. So George Floyd thing happens. I'm working at the last company I'm at. And they call and they say, and by the way, at record labels, they don't ever say, get on the call now. 
They don't work like that. Like, they'll give you the benefit of the doubt. They'll be like, yo, Jay, yo, John, John, I'm sorry. Joe, yo, Jay, Joe, 4 p.m., I need y'all to clear your schedule. I need y'all 4 p.m. They always give you a couple hours if it's emergency. In this case, they said 15 minutes, which was weird. I'm like, 15 minutes? I thought something bad. I thought, like, we was all losing our job. I, I couldn't, like, in my mind, I'm like, what the, what's going on? So they get on the call, and then they go, the uprising is happening. And I'm like, that's what this call's about? The fucking uprising? Like, it, was, it bothered me because it was like, Dog, black people have been dealing with this the whole time. We like, like, George Floyd did nothing to me because Rodney King did it first. Mm. Watching Rodney King get beat up, that did, and getting them, the police officers getting up and high fiving each other, we don't believe in the judicial system for us. Mm. So when George Floyd died, it was just like, damn, another one. White people was mad. So they get on the call and they're like, hey, so the CEO at the time says on the call, he says, to all the black people, no mind, just like 200 of us. On the call, on this, it's a Zoom. He says to all the black people, is there anything we could do to help you? Is there anything we could say? Is there anything you want to say? And everybody looked like, y'all both look like, what? So nobody said nothing, but I was pissed when he did that. And by the way, we were friends. That was my friend. So I was like, I think I need to help my friend understand how to interact with black people more because you're the CEO, you're running the company, there's a lot of black people, black artists. So I wrote this letter about the black experience. And it was basically like, yo, so look, when you come in the game, this is what you're taught. You got to work twice as hard to make half as much as your white counterparts. You got to, uh, you know, we don't see nobody at the top that's black. Everybody black at the top got a white boss. Y'all can come in the room and play our music with N-words in it. And we, we can't say nothing about it, even though part of us is like, does he say it when I'm not around? Mm -hmm. So I was just trying to like give like, Black people don't have no power, so don't expect us to speak up because it's already a miracle that we're here. Mm. So that letter changed my entire life. So I wrote that letter. It was called, and, and, and before I sent it to the CEO and a COO, I sent it to two, it's only, I'm the third highest black person at the company, ranked person at the company. So I sent it to the only two people who were above me. Just like, yo, wrote this letter to those guys, what you think? And the lawyer he went in. Why would you write this letter? Why are you talking about what it's like to be a black executive when this is about George Floyd dying and about black people being underserved? And I'm like, oh, I thought it was all the same fucking thing to me. So I felt like shit. It was like one in the morning when I got his response. So I was up to like five in the morning. One of my homies, you know, like you're on Instagram, you check your Instagram late in the night. One of my homeboys liked it. Like, like the picture of mine, like four in the morning. So I called him. I'm like, yo, bro, don't be weird. I know I'm calling you at 4 a.m., but you just like the picture. He's like, yeah, what's going on? I said, bro, I wrote this letter, and I just need you to take five minutes out and read it. And he was like, cool. And he didn't call me that night. And I wanted to, I wound up going to sleep because I felt like I got it off my chest. You know, I sent it to somebody because I, I, my heart is pure. I was only trying to help. I didn't realize that me trying to help made me the enemy. So... I sent it to my guy, and when I wake up, he calls me, wake me up like 9 in the morning. Remember, it was like 5 oh, in the morning. Yeah. So he calls me, wake me up like 9 in the morning, like, yo. I'm like, what's up? He said, I sent your letter to such and such and such and such. And I was like, oh, okay. I mean, you liked it? And he was like, did I like it? Nigga, I cried reading it. Mm. And the other person I sent it to, he cried reading it. He wants to talk to you. It's my boy. I'm like, but by, by the way, he's huge. It's like, I ain't going to lie. It's Larry Jackson. Larry Jackson at the time, he's running Apple. So Larry gets on the phone with me, and me and Larry have been known each other 20 years. We ain't never talked that long. We was on the phone for an hour and a half, and he was telling me everything he's been going through as a black man. And he was like, that letter helped me. And he said, I hope you don't be mad at me, but I also sent it to Hannah Karp, who is the editor-in-chief of Billboard magazine. I was like, okay. <laughs> That's cool. I, my, my, Jay, I, we live in Atlanta. Like, black people in Atlanta are not afraid of white people. Yeah. It's the, it's the only place in America where black people are not afraid of white people. Like, what? You saw, you saw what happened when we, they shot a police officer here. We burnt that bitch down. You ain't going to play with us here, black. We ain't, the mayor's black. The police chief is black. All the powerful lawyers are black. You are not going to play with us. So that's why I don't, I'm not afraid of white people. I'm a black man in Atlanta. So, you know, Hannah's like, hey, look, I'm going to put the letter out. It's incredible. She said, me as a white woman, I can relate to. Cool. But I want to take your name off and I want to make it anonymous. I'm like, okay, I guess so. I don't, I don't care. 
letter goes out, goes crazy. And then I have all black people know I wrote it, no white people know I wrote it. White people are looking for the guy that wrote this letter because every black person in the music business is sharing it. Like, you white friends, you need to read this letter. So I have all these people looking for me, like, who wrote the letter? Who, who's anonymous? So they figured out it was me. So then I get on the phone with this lawyer, and she's like, yeah, you know, I'm a fucking, they're not going to play with you. I'm going to tell them you wrote the letter, but you have to stand on it. You are the, like, black people are like, you are the voice of us, of them, because she was a white woman. She said, but you have to stand on it. So I said, I never, not, I didn't have a problem standing on it in the first place. I don't care. So she calls the guys at Warner and tell them I wrote the letter. They was like, oh, because everybody was trying to figure out who wrote it. She was like, it was like, our guy wrote it. Fuck. I'm like, it's not a bad thing. I'm just telling you the black experience. So anyway, man, white people are so passive aggressive. And that's my problem. I, the letter, I wrote the letter a year into my contract at Warner. Well, I don't want to say the company. At the last company I was with. I, I was a year into my contract when I wrote the letter. They were, they held on to the fact that I wrote that letter. And when it was time for my contract to be renewed, they fucked me. Mm. And by the way, the CEO apologized to me a year later. Like, I, I did you dirty. I can't lie. I understand it. But that shit changed me. Because here I am, a black man trying to show my white counterparts. By the way, I made music with, I made music with country folks. White folks. I, I didn't realize that I was clear. I, you know what I mean by clear is like my skin. Like, they saw me as black, but I was like OJ. Like, you black, but you ain't like them. Okay, I get I didn't know that. So I wrote the letter. Then it was like, I like oh, nigga, I like you OJ. <laughs> oh, nigga, you OJ. Yeah. So now, most, dog, anybody in the business will tell you. Ask Mayno, I mean, Wayno, ask anybody in this business, they will tell you. When you have a job, the courtesy is to give you six months to let you know if your contract is going to be renewed or not renewed. They told me 10 months in. And my lawyer, don't have him talk to nobody. Don't shop him to nobody. He's our guy. My lawyer was like, they love you. I'm like, really? I didn't feel love, but okay, I get maybe, maybe I just don't read it. Ten months they told me that. Three days before my contract is up. They call me and tell me you ain't get no contract. With no, no reason. Then I called a black lawyer who worked there, and I'm like, man, they damn ruined my contract. And she was like, Ray, don't they hate it that you wrote that letter. That's what it's about. I forgot about it. So when I left my last situation, now my back's against the wall. So I got two choices. I can either go beg for tips, but everybody going to say to me, what? Why are you here talking to me? You, it's, right now, yeah. you was over there. They told me you wasn't going nowhere. Something must be wrong with you. Mm. That's why they they some bitches. And I, I, they, like, I'll never respect them for that because I feed my family with this. So they set me up. So at that moment, I had a choice. I could either go ask for another job or I can build myself. So I was like, put a camera on me. I'm smarter than 99% of these niggas any fucking way. Ask me a question. Watch how I answer. I start putting clips out. Shit start going crazy. By the way, when I sat down with the CEO of Warner, who I'm cool with now, we cool now. First thing you want to talk about is a podcast. You're killing it. Fuck out my face. Mm -hmm. Like, I, I'm different, bro. Like, I love, I, by the way, I love him. Love his fam, love him. But, bro. You showed me that my family don't matter to you. So I have to love you from a distance now. Because I would have never did that to you. So here I am. I'm like, dog, I cried. I drove home every day for a month. That's why you can't make me hate Kanye. Kanye has a song on his Donda album called 24. I listen to that song every day on my 45-minute ride home. Back to back to back. And it's a line in the song where he says, God's not finished. And I'll be tearing up and driving home. God ain't finished. Get to my family, nothing. Yeah, they wouldn't even know I was tearing up. Get in the house, we're going to be fine. Put a camera on me. Put a camera on me. And now all of a sudden, everybody's losing their jobs. Now all the people that lost their jobs is calling me saying, Ray, what should we do? Hey, bro, if you don't build a community, you're going to lose in this America. This America is not about individuals. This America is about a community. Everybody who left Puff Community left after they saw him abuse women. Community is shut down. He can make money, but the community is shut down. Community is shut down. Nobody's going, nobody's going to support you no more. So I tell everybody, I'm like, and you know another thing that used to change me, Jay? I'm going to tell you. I used to, when I was working at my last company, every kid I was signed requested to meet one person, Gary V. And that was offensive to me. No offense to Gary V. I'm like, why the fuck you want to talk to him? He don't know shit about music. But I understood 
it's because he made them feel like he cared. He probably does. He does care. So I was like, man, I'm going to just be Gary Vee of music. I'm going to just give information out. That's what I'm going to do. And then all of a sudden, it was like, I would go places, and now people were like, yo, Ray, Ray. And I'm like, damn, like you just never know who's watching. So for me, man, I, I lost my situation. I had, my, I had a studio around the corner. It was costing me 20 bands a month. They were paying for a good part of it, half of it, while I was making money doing other half, but that helped. So they tell me about my situation. 11 days into January, nigga, I got to pay rent on the first. I'm still 11th now. So now I got to struggle up another 10000 to pay the studio, not including that. In 20 more days, I'm going to have to do it again. Mm. So now I'm like, I'm really drowning. Because I'm like, I don't know what to do. Boy, God is so incredible. A friend of mine hits me. My, my boy wife hits me. Yo, you know, such and such. Yeah, yeah, what about him? He's selling the studio. Selling the studio? What? But he just needs somebody to take it now. I'm like, oh, let me go over there and look. Beautiful. How much you want for it? Tell me the rent. Rent was under 4K. Under 4K. Beautiful spot. He was like, just give me the money I put in it. Wrote him a check for 200K. Two days later, moved into the studio. Now my studio is cheaper than that. So that's what I'm trying to tell. That's why I'll scream at the top of any mountain to anybody that looked like us and tell us, bro, you got to just go. And I know it's scary. And I know you're worrying about losing. And I know you're scared of your family. And your parents are going to laugh at you. Your friends are going to laugh at you. Everybody's going to say, I knew you didn't make it. But, dog, trying is the win. There's only a, in life, there's only W's and L's, wins and lessons. But you don't get the win or the lesson unless you try. So trying is what trying is the win. Bro, in the, in the, in the, in the famous words of uh, my guy, La Russell, Shout out to this white man. A white guy taught me one of my most valuable lessons. Shout out to Ian Schwartzman. Mm -hmm. Y'all know Ian? Yeah, yeah. Uh, Joe Manager. Yeah, yeah. He said something really dope. He was like, bro, people never want to remember what don't work. Yep. So all you got to do is get out there and do it. Yep. Because when you fail, they never going to remember that. Mm -hmm. They only remember when you win. Mm -hmm. And that gave me confidence because like sometimes you can get Especially when you have success, sometimes you can get high, like, I don't know, high hit it on your high yep. horse and think yep. you're too good to do things. Like, yep. I can't do that because they're going to look at me differently. Yep. Like, bro, them niggas ain't, ain't well, he ain't said that. <laughs> He's like, they ain't going to, they ain't going to never remember what don't work. Yep. So we just keep, get out there and go. But this is what I'm saying. As long as you're trying, you don't lose. That's why 50 Cent said, get rich or die. Mm. As long as you got air in your lungs, you got a chance you can to try. Whatever. Yeah. The problem most of us have is we don't try. We're waiting on a sign. Well, guess what? Here's your sign. Try. Mm. So all you got to do is try. I and, got that. And the world will reward you for trying. That's it. I got that tatted on my chest. Mm. Life and chance. As long as you got life in your lungs, you got a chance to do whatever you want. You got a chance, you bro. You got a chance, bro. And But it's nothing. Dog, I wake up every day so happy to be breathing, so happy to, to go after it, like, I'm blessed to be talking to you. I don't look at it like that. Like I'm lucky. I could have called everybody, anybody else today. You want to talk to me? That's that's a bless. That is God's reward for doing the work. That's how I look at the world. Like I don't look at it like, like dog. I just try, bro. You don't understand. I done been through so much over the last two and a half years. I've cried more in the last two and a half years, and I've cried in the. 40 years before that. And I'm including my kid because every night, it, every day it was like I was being tried. And it was like, and it's like, you know how hard it is? I don't know if y'all feel this way, but you know, especially being a black man, you know how hard it is knowing and no one else acknowledges it. And then you got to go out and still do it because you know it. And then once you do it, everybody wants to humble you in it. Be humble. Motherfucker, if you would have, I was trying to tell y'all, and I was humble when I came. Y'all didn't listen. I go do it, and now you want me to be humble. But being humble is their way of saying share. You ain't gonna get me like that. Fuck that. I'm not. Gonna, I'm not. Don't tell me to be humble. Don't tell me that. I don't want to be humble. I've been humble my whole fucking life. Humble is what they taught the slaves to be. Be humble. Be thankful you're free. Nah, motherfucker. I want what I want because, and I'm going to go get it. I don't got to get it from you, but I'm going to go get it. And that's how I see the world. And I did it. And, bro, like, you can't, I, 
Like, bro, I, I've never felt this strong in my life. And it's, it's so deep because it's just order. It's just order. If you focus on order, you'll win. Most of the time, we don't focus on order. And what I mean by order is the order in the way things are supposed to happen. Like, look at what's, look, look, look at black relationships right now. Like, look at it. It's like women, like, he got to make this much money. And God's like, he got to do this. Where are we just trying to figure out who going who gonna to go first? Who going to go first? You want to go first? Okay, cool. You go first and I'll follow. No, nah, you go first and I'll follow. We so fucking stupid. Here, I give. Here, here, take it. Now it's yours. Now guess what giving does for me? Now that I gave you what you wanted, it shows me who you really are. Mm. So I don't mind giving you. Giving exposes people. It exposes people. When you give the people, it exposes them. Bro, because now they know who you are. It's like, it's like, you got a girl that says, oh, my God, you're so handsome. I like you so much. Da, da, da. Yeah, man, nice to see you, too. And she's like, yeah. you know, I'm de-. And then you call to her and she's like, I'm dealing with some shit. Oh, my God, I need help. Blah, blah. And you're like, oh, here. In a weird way, it's kind of weird because it's like, you just met me. You've been living your life. However long you've been living life, you don't know nobody to call. But you know what? Here. And then you show me who you are. And now it's like, that was a cost I played. Pay for the relationship because I'd rather lose money than time. So what you want? Here. Go ahead. I don't care about the money. Dog, I'm a money magnet. That shit finds me. I don't care. It's not, it finds me. Opportunity finds me. I'd rather give you the time, the money so you can go away so I can figure out who you really are. Oh, come closer. We don't know who people are until we give them. So let's give now. That's why I give in the beginning. And that's it. Mm. Yo, it's, it's crazy just listening to you now compared to like, I think some of the interviews I watched was like old. Oh, but at a time, you was, like, happy to be here, though. Yeah, but I, I'm still happy to be here. I've never stopped being happy to be here. I just acknowledge why I'm here. Like, that's what, that's what I'm saying. Like, like, like it's like some, some niggas want to make it to the NBA so they can buy their mama house and buy a car. And that's what they wanted. Some niggas are like, nigga, I'm going to be the best. That nigga's going to be the best. The nigga that just wanted to make it, he made it. The nigga that wanted to be the best was the best. Mm. Simple as that. So it's the mentality. The mentality tells us how far we go or where we want to go. The mentality is everything, bro. Mm. That's why I'm like, what we're doing right now is we're trying to change the mentality of the watchers. We don't need it. <laughs> now we can take some more, but we ain't like, you're doing it. You got a podcast. Shit is doing good. Numbers. You're making money. You're doing it. There's another person right now hating that's mad at you because you're doing it because they feel like I could be better than him. Prove it. Mm. Prove it. Start the such and such and such and such podcast and then see if you can beat me. Mm. It's really that simple because I remember when I first started. It's funny because when I first started doing content, I remember I just wanted to be on other people's shows. And I and and not to expose, but Michael McDonald, that's my bro from Earn Your Leisure. But the girl who I was working with, I was like, yo, I want to do Earn Your Leisure. And she was like, they say you ain't got enough followers. And I was like, what? It wasn't bad. And then I was like, damn, okay. I guess clout matters everywhere. Yeah, I get it. my clout up there. I gotta get my, so I was like, let me just, I'm just do what I was going to do on their shit for my shit. Mm. Now, I got people asking me to do their shit. But all I did was put a camera on me. Like, cameras everywhere. These ain't the only cameras in the world. You don't get some? By the way, if you don't need a camera, you got a phone. Hey. Don't tell me you need. You're bullshitting. God wants to see how, how much do you believe so he can show you how he can reward you. You're not going to get it because you prayed for it. You're going to get it because you work for it. Mm. You got to work for it first, then pray, work, then pray, work, then pray, then receive. But it is still a different Ray Daniels that I'm looking at now. Mm -hmm. Especially from the guy, the t what, 24-year-old when you first started. What does this Ray Daniels tell that young guy? Oh, what man. some advice would you give him? You the shit. Just because you heard you was you wasn't shit your whole life don't mean you ain't the shit. You just one. You just was around the wrong people. You the shit. Believe in yourself. Once I did that, bro, I'm telling you, bro. Like the only difference between the people who we look up to and the regular people is the people we look up to believed in themselves and put some action behind it. It's the only difference. So I'm like, shit. You gotta believe in yourself. Put some action behind it. So when I was younger, I didn't believe in myself. I just put action behind it. And I was thankful for anything I got. But I'm also glad because, so I've been in the music business since 2005. I've been, I was doing really good for myself 
But 2000, I knew I was missing something. So I went to go work for L.A. Reid because everybody who I looked up to looked up to him. And then I started figuring out the secrets. Once, By the way, L.A. Reid is the fucking man. Yeah, bro, that nigga, he taught me so fucking much about life that I feel like I can't lose. And I felt like I can't lose. Now I know I can't lose. All I could do is learn a lesson. Try to learn a lesson. Be smart about what you try. Don't, don't, don't feel the need to prove yourself. You want to start a podcast, you don't got to go rent. You don't got to go pay a production crew, get five cameras. Put a camera your iPhone on you and talk. See how you like that. You might like it. You might not. But you don't go just spend. I ain't spend. I ain't, I ain't investing a set, bro, until like six months into my show. I was like, why am I investing a set if I don't know I can film it? Hmm. I got to figure out. I got to see if I can film it first. Like, can I do it consistently and greatly? How about this? What if the people don't like it? There's so many reasons, so many things going on that I'm like, you know what? You can't worry about that. All you know, and then I have a life coach. I have a business coach, like I see her. Shout out to Michelle. And Michelle asked me, she said, and I was in between, like, I had a couple jobs come my way, and she said, what do you want? And that's a hard question to ask of somebody. Because you might say, I want I want this, I want that. But it's like, no, no, no. What do you really want? And she was like, and I was like, I don't know. And she was like, six months. She said, today is January 1st, 2023. I'll never forget. She said, today is January 1st. Two, by the way, it's like this is like June 2022. She said, today is January 1st, 2023. You got the job of your dreams, all that's there. What are you happy you did for you? And I was like, man, lose some weight and start a media company. And she was like, then that's what you need to be doing then. I lost 60 pounds. <laughs> I started a media company. Feel good as a motherfucker. I'm making good money for my pod. I got opportunities. I'm about to do an interview. I'm about to do a one-on-one interview with Steve Stout in Atlanta. United Master Select kind of like, bro, like I feel amazing. And let's be clear, I got the number one songwriter in the world. <laughs> Shit, let's not act like we didn't win the Grammy for songwriter of the year. So it's like I got all this good stuff happening for me. And God was like, I was waiting to give it to you, but you didn't, you had to show yourself you wanted it. Mm. So now I feel like I deserve it. That's another thing. You might. You can give a person a million dollars today. If they don't feel like they deserve it, they're going to give it away. Or they're going to fuck it up. If you give somebody a million, first of all, you can't give someone a million that deserves it because he's going to go out and earn it. And when he does get it, he's not going to fuck it up because he earned it. Simple. Mm -mm. What do you think the biggest lesson of it all was? The biggest lesson to me was there's a big difference between knowing and believing. Everybody has belief. Like, I know God is real. I don't believe it no more. I always believed in God, but I know it now because I went on a mission and I was scared to death and I cried every night. But he said, every morning I woke up with a smile on my face. He's like, look at you. Just stop letting the world beat you down. You're hurt because you're around shit that you don't need to be around. So then you start realizing you could pick and choose the people around you. So I start hanging out with people that made me feel good, hanging out with people that motivated me, hanging out with people that sp spoke life into me, or sometimes not hanging around. Shout out to J.R. McKee. Just sat down with J.R. one day. J.R. was like, J.R. looked at me one day. Shout out to J.R. McKee, my Virgo brother. That mother, I want to give him his credit. We was literally right downstairs. We was downstairs at uh, West Egg. Mm. Go eat breakfast. <laughs> and we talking, and... He's telling me about how he's breaking money long and all those other stuff. And he kind of looked at me like, like, you know who you are? I was like, and it was weird because I'm like getting advice from him. But he was like, nigga, you Ray Daniels. Like, nigga, I don't know how to do what you know how to do. If I knew how to do what you know how to do, it'd be different. I was like, damn, you right. I was like, I was like you know what? I'm going to hire a content creator. I just hired a content creator. But I'm like, oh, I ain't going to lie, man. This is amazing life, man. This is an amazing mission, man. Like, I just love it, man, because... I lived it consciously. I wasn't like like in, in another mindset. I was conscious in it. I was like, I'm gonna call Joe. I'm gonna be, I'm gonna say to Joe, hey Joe, how can I help you? And then realize how Joe was like, well, damn, Ray, thank you for that. How can I help you now? Now imagine I went to Joe and said, Joe, can you help me? Nigga, 
It's a line. I'm wounded and I was offering help. I was wounded and I was like, yo, how, how can I help you? How can I help you? How can I help you? Then me helping people made me stronger. It's weird. It's so crazy, man. Like, I just wish that everybody just could experience what I experienced because the world would be better. Be less complaining, less bitching, and more doing. I'm trying to figure out how, how did you keep maintaining that, that helping spirit with a broken heart? Because I, I, mean, I, I, I committed to the role. And once you commit to the role, you can't go back on it. Like, like it's kind of like, let's go back to that Wizard of Oz journey. You don't get halfway to the Wiz and turn around. But we see so many people commit to something and go back on it. And that's the difference between those people are givers and takers. <laughs> it ain't working for me today. I'm quitting. I want to do it today. I'm going to do it. Nah. I do it whether I want to or not. No matter how I feel that day. Dog, I'm starving. I haven't eat. I'm a diabetic. I haven't eaten all day. I'm starving. I'm here doing an interview. That's me. I'll die trying. That's just the type of nigga I am. Like, I'm not going to get nobody an excuse. I'm not going to give myself an excuse. I'm going to fucking try. That's that simple. Like, I know, and I feel like people might watch it, but oh, it's more than that. It's not. Just try. Like, and if you don't know what you want to do, give somebody else a helping hand. Sometimes you might not have a vision. Dog, there was a lot of people that got rich with Mark Zuckerberg. Facebook was his idea. There was a lot of people got rich with him. There was a lot of people got rich with Bill Gates. A lot of people got rich with Hove. A lot of people got rich with Puff. Well, not, well, maybe Puff, yeah. I think he may, probably made some people rich. His business was always questioned. Um, I'm just being honest. Like, I want to give it to him. Like, you know, like, like, a lot of people got rich. Nigga, you just got to show up. So I show up. I don't know. This might do a billion views. It might do nothing. How will I know unless I show up? Mm. You got to show up. You can't quit. You got to do it. So once I told myself that, man, it was better. So it's like, and then I also take weekends off. I'm a week, and I have boundaries in my life. Like, I don't talk business in my house. When I'm in my house and my family's, I don't give a fuck who's calling unless it's money. And if it's money calling, I put it on speaker so everybody in the house can hear. Because I want my family to know what daddy does. So I'm going to put it on the speaker. That's real talk. So when I'm home, I don't answer my phone. You can't get me on the phone. Unless I like, you my, we work together, like you my business partner, Tehran can call me five in the morning. I'm going to answer. That's my best friend in the world. But like, if you call me from a late party, oh, we'll hear that. It can wait till tomorrow. It can. Once I established that, man, it was like, I love life now. What's today? Thursday? Tomorrow's Friday. You, you know what I'm curious about, bro? Because mm -hmm. sometimes I feel like I feel this way. It's kind of like a breakup. Like, we talk about the old job. Mm -hmm. And like, they did you so dirty in that. Yeah. Hurt. And sometimes that hurt can be the, the the inspiration for you to do something great. Yes. Do you think you still hold on to that though? I'm glad you asked that. That was a great question. I'm gonna tell everybody something. Nothing great comes without pain. Mm. Nothing. Beyonce is incredible. You don't think that she had, she was, when her dad had her when she was 14, performing in heels, singing in heels, running in heels. That's the pain. But here she is at 42 years old and can do it. And everybody's like, how did she do it? She's been doing it since she was 14, 13. I've, I, I, actually, I actually embrace pain because pain means it's working. It's like going to the gym. Like when you start living away, it's like if you do, if you see another, like, you kind of like, hey, you, you, nah, something wrong with how I'm doing. I need to do it right. Because you understand that pain is necessary for you to feel. Because it's like, it's like, it's like your threshold. It's like, like, it's weird, man. I think about my first paycheck, my first job I ever got. My first job was, I worked at McDonald's. First real job where I paid taxes. I worked at McDonald's, 16 years old. Got my check. My check was $142. I'll never forget. I took the fuck, I took the 89S to College Park train station. Got on the College Park ticket to Greenbrier. Took, took the bus to Greenbrier, went shopping. I was so happy. It was like one of the greatest days of my life. Like, it was like, I own this check. So I forgot. I got to call my mom. Fuck, I ain't taking my mom. I was so excited. I was so caught in the moment. It's like 8.30, 8.45. You know, mall closed at 9. Call my mom from a payphone. Mom, what's up? My mom is going crazy on the phone. Where are you? 
I'm like, damn, she's worried about me. Damn, ma, no, ma, it's okay. It's okay. I got, I'm, I'm at the mall. I got paid today. Motherfucker, I know you got paid. That's why I'm asking, where the fuck are you at? Where the fuck is your check? It's my mother now. I said, I, I just spent it. She said, you better take that shit back. You ain't gonna be living in my motherfucking house and got, got a check. How much was your check? $142. You better bring me $50 right now. Bro, when people come to my houses, they see my houses, my office, I got a crib right around the corner, a condo around the corner, employees. People are like, how the fuck do you do this? I'm like, nigga, my mom took my first check. <laughs> nigga, how the fuck? I can't be beat. <laughs> nigga, here's the crazy part. I still piece off money for her. Now it's just smaller because the checks are bigger. So now she wants a couple hundred dollars. It's like, no problem. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? But that, and I never forget my homeboy laughed at me. Man, your mama make you pay for your man fucked up. I'm like, man, I hate it. I hated her. But I see my homies now. I look at me and I'm like, thank you, ma. Even though I didn't like it, even though you didn't know what you was doing, thank you. Because that shit made me a fucking G. Bro, it's nothing I don't think I can handle. It's nothing I'm afraid of. Except for like losing family or like, you know, like getting sick. That's the only time. But it's my like life, business. Like, bro, you got, you got to deal with it, bro. No life is sweet. It's just you get better. Well, that situation is so better, bittersweet. And I was wondering, like, at, at what cost do we endure that pain? Because we think about Beyonce. You, you give an example. Yep. Beyonce. We've heard horror stories about Matthew. Yep. Right? The same with Michael Jackson. Right, yeah. Think about our great both Virgos, by the way, Mike and B. Keep going. Who endured such a great deal of pain to be the best ever? Yep. But the people that put them through pain, they only have bad stories about them, almost. Yeah. Well, nothing great is fun. Like what he said, you weren't with me shooting in the gym. Like that shit is work. Is work, bro. You you like sports? Mm -hmm. Me too. I love you. you. Like sports. When I watch the NBA now, I'm like, how the fuck does everybody shoot threes? Isn't it crazy? Like, I remember the NBA where you shot a three and meant something. Now, yeah, everybody, big, center big shoot guy, threes, yeah, big guys, uh, Embiid, Cat, everybody shooting threes. I'm like, how did they get so good at that? Because they was practicing. And it was a part of the game, so they let them incorporate in the game, and they had to go in the gym and shoot thousands of shots every day to get better. You think they, you, dog, I, I, was, I did these, I interviewed with these kids today. Best thing I ever said, I said, you're going to pay in life. You can pay now, you can pay later. If you pay now, y'all 15, 16. Now is the time to pay. You ain't got no bills. You ain't got no, no real responsibilities. Go after your dream. Or you can enjoy your, your, your early years. And not go after your dream, but you're going to pay later. Mm. I, was like, you, I was like, you ever seen somebody, you ever seen an adult working in a job that you didn't want? And they was, that, that you would never work? And they was like, yeah. I'm like, they didn't want that job either. That janitor don't want to be a janitor. That bus driver don't want to be a bus driver. That was what they settled for because they played and now they're going to pay. I don't, I'm like, hey, I paid early. So now I'm enjoying my life. I live my life like I'm 16 years old. Mm, I was going to ask you because it was times where you said, man, it was times where you wanted to quit two, three times a week. Oh, yeah, all the time I want to quit. But I'm wondering now, how does that look? Do you still feel I still that feel like quitting. Like, dog, quit. Dog, if you don't want to quit, you ain't human. How about this? I'm going to take it further. If you don't want to quit, you ain't trying. Mm. If you don't want to quit, you ain't trying. I try. That's why I want to quit. You know how hard it is to, dog, well, it, for you and I to win, it takes somebody sitting in that seat. Right? <laughs> Am I right? Yeah. So guess what? So guess what? Some days you might get in a room with somebody and they might not show up. Some days you might get in a room with somebody and they might make it bad. But in, that's you. You got to understand. You got to be hopeful that the next one is right. But you won't get to the next one if you quit. Right? Mm -hmm. Boom. You just hit the nail on the cop. You don't, you don't never. No, nah, I'm not going to. That's redundant. Talking about being discouraged, yeah. Because again, our job is so guest oriented, right? I don't even know. It's like that. That makes me want to quit. That's by the way, makes me by, by the way, how hard is it to do this? Mm. How hard is it to do this? Like, th and by the way, most podcasts that are really big now, except for Joe Budden, popped off 
during a pandemic. Mm-hmm. Why did they pop off during a pandemic? Everybody was in the house. Wait. Nobody, we had a number of time on our hands. Yep. Boom. So now we coming out post pandemic. Nobody has time. Your subscribers is going up. Your views ain't going up the way you wanted to. Trust me, bro. I know it. <laughs> I know it. But what I had to figure out was, and do I care about the views or do I care about the conversation? Mm. If I care about the views, I'm going to be disappointed. Me and you had the same conversation if Mike wasn't here and Joe wasn't here with Cam. Were we not? Mm-hmm. We was having this conversation before Joe said action. Yeah. Because this is what we do. That's what I'm trying to say. So it's like, bro, I'm just, I'm just dedicated. Mm. And I know it's hard. I'm dedicated. And I, I say this famously to everybody I encounter. I might see this out one day and whisper to you, commit to the character. Mm. Don't break the character. Commit. They know who you are. They just try, this is their first time seeing you out and about. I knew who you was. I knew who you was when you walked up to me. I didn't tell you I knew who you was. Well, I might have did, but I knew exactly who you was when you walked up to me because I, I saw the interview you did with drama. I was like, so you know, of course, I'm a podcaster. I'm going deep down looking at numbers. I'm like, oh shit, this guy. I saw you run an ad on on Top Dog Law. Come on, bro. I pay attention. And I call my people like, me and him are around the same place. And he got advertised. What are we doing? Mm. Because my problem is that I pay for everything out my music money. I'm tired of robbing Peter to pay Paul. Tired of robbing Peter. Like, you got to understand. Think about this shit. You got to commit to the character. You got to take care of your family. You got to keep maintaining the job you have. And you got to invest in a new endeavor. God damn, I want to quit. Now, what the fuck is the help? But you start realizing more and more and more every day as you go, right, Joe? Every day as you go, you start realizing it gets easier and easier. But then here comes a bigger challenge. Now it's like, fuck, again? You got to conquer that wall. Then you be oh, like, Mark finally. God. And then here comes another challenge. It's like, my nigga. You, you know, it's, bro, and not to cut you off. Now nah, go ahead. The hard part about it is we are breaking barriers that we have never seen broken before, especially in our house. And I, like my family has never grad, graduated from college. I don't yeah. know nobody. I'm, yeah. I'm pretty sure my, my aunt may be somewhere, yeah. but not in my household. My mother never graduated yeah. from college. I don't know who my father is. Exactly. Speaking of college, we talking about making hundreds of thousands of dollars. I've never seen that. I don't yeah. know what to do with it. Yeah. I don't know what to do with good credit. Yeah. So a lot of times we get to these places, then we take five steps backwards because when we get there, we wasn't prepared for it, and we fumble the bar. Oh and it's like, bro. my God! <laughs> I tell everybody that I said, don't pray for the opportunity. Prepare for it. Mm. You praying for it, and you ain't ready for it. Facts. And then you get it, and you fuck it up. Prepare for it. Prepare, like, dog, I'm about to fly in a business coach and pay this person 30K to come help coach my company for, for five days. It's just 6000 a day I'm paying. Then I'm paying a media trainer 10K to come train me next week. I don't think I need it, but I don't know what I don't need because mm. we don't have no guidance on the fucking journey. So guess what? I'm going to pay the lesson. To, I'm going to pay the money to learn the lesson. I'm prepared for that, though. I understand that that is a part of the journey. Mm. Because when does it happen? When does it happen? I love saying that. I'm going to be the best. When? When? You got to start the journey somehow. Might as well be now. Simple as that. Mm. Most of us don't. Like, I am living, dog, I am living it as I'm talking it to you. I am the most unique, and, I, and I'm saying this respectfully, I'm the most unique podcaster in this game, at this level, because I am running a, I am, I am Draymond Green of music. Mm-hmm. He is running a podcast that's really popular, but he's also at the top of his game. JJ Reddick got a podcast, but he retired. Lou Williams got a podcast, but he retired. Er, Shaq got a podcast, but he retired. Draymond, now you got Patrick Beverly does too, but Draymond is at the top. And it's because so I, I wish people understood. I'm like, dog, I'm shooting three, four shows a day. My office is right there. I got 90 emails coming in. I got to respond to emails while changing clothes, while someone, like, bro. And then I still go home to my family and make sure my kids know I love them. Man, you know how hard it is to do this shit? You, I want anybody listening to know, you don't have time to complain. Mm-hmm. 
if you have time to complain, you are doing it wrong. Mm. If you have time to complain, you are doing it wrong. So if you complaining right now, you see this, you're doing it wrong. Yo, you said something that was interesting, and it, it goes into like the work aspect of it. Because you're a music exec. Can I move this pillow? I'm sorry. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Fucking weird. You're, you're a music exec, and you can just, nah. I got, I, got, okay, I got you, bro. Thank you. I'm listening. And I, I, think, I, I, don't, I think Beehive might have asked you this. I love Beehive. I think he was like, what advice do you give the artist trying to get signed? And you was like, don't try to get signed. Why are you worrying about getting signed? Why is that the... Why is that the but my question, I ask that because if it wasn't for your old job, and I'm not saying that they made you, sure. right? But if it wasn't for your old job, and outside of the money that the label don't really give you, but outside of, if they don't give you the look, then you get, it's no next level. Like, sometimes I want to be a music exec. Sometimes I want to be signed because it's a, it's a look. I love where you're going. character. I love where you're going. And that, that creates a different... A different J now. Expectations. Now, you get what I'm yes, saying? Yes, for sure. So now it was like, yeah, I didn't want to get signed for the money, but I understand what this does for my people. I, let me tell you what it does. I love that you said that. That's really good. Let me tell you something. I'll tell people this. If I used to, so I worked for four level labels, major labels. 2007 to 2009, I worked at Motown. 2013 to 2000. 15, I worked at Epic. 2016 to two, 2015 and 2016, I worked at Interscope. 2019 to 2022, I worked at Warner. Now, here, 2020, yeah, two, here's, the, here's what I want you to know. Every time I walked in the room, they said the name of the company I was with. They didn't say Ray Daniels is in the house. They said Dev, Interscope's in the house. Warner's in the house. Epic is in the house. Universal Motown's in the house. I'm the same nigga. Mm -hmm. I'm the same nigga. I got tired of people giving me props for something that I didn't even, like, here's the crazy part. I make more money from my company than I made from any label job I've ever had. Dog, you think a label job is paying for my office? Think of my, dog, I have two mansions, million dollar houses in the same neighborhood. You really think a job is going to pay for... Now, you could pay the mortgage, but you really think a job is going to give me... I'm going to be able to stack the $100,000 I need to put down on the house, the first house that I bought? Or you think I need the $200,000 I put down on the second house I bought that I live in? Where the hell are you getting $200,000 in cash if you're making $300,000 a year? That came from me. Well, my question is, you... Do you think you're able to get the clients, the artists that you are able to get with your business without the credibility? Yes. Mm. Because it's not about the business. It's about what you know. It's that simple. That's what we weren't taught. See, this is the problem with us when we look at companies. The company is ran by people. And the only thing that they have over us is the fucking Warners. Jack Warner started Warner in the 1920s. Shit, I, he got cataloged for decades and decades and decades. Of course, they can take their time and build. That's what we can't afford. We don't have the equity, previous equity to hold us down while we figure it out. That's why we got to be smart. That's the key. Who do you know who's built it without working for any big names? Shit, plenty. Baby Slim, P, Coach. Um, shit, top, like, lot, it's a lot, it's a lot, mm -hmm. Hove, it's a lot of them, that's what I'm saying, like, dog, what game do you want to play is the question you got to ask yourself, that's what I mean by 97% of the world will let the opportunity predict who they are, mm -hmm. so what I mean by that is like, you got the J Hill podcast, right? Boom. We got the J Hill podcast. Welcome to the J Hill podcast. We're doing really good here. That's my man. That's my producer, Joe. We killing it right now. Here comes Charlemagne. Hey, man, I give you a million dollars to come be on a breakfast club. Hey, man, Joe, I ain't going to lie, man. You know, like, I love you, Joe, but this opportunity, I can't <laughs> shake. <laughs> you just change your whole plan because of an opportunity. Now, ain't nothing wrong with that, <clears throat> but... And Matt, like, I remember Mike Karen tells me a story. He told me this story. 
shout out to Mike Heron, one of the smartest men in the business. He tells me a story about Pharrell when I first met him. He said, I had a meeting with Pharrell, and I thought him and his partner, Chad, were incredible. And he said, it was the first time I met with a producer who would play me, a label exec, a record, and would tell me, you can't have that, that's for Jay-Z. Or you can't have that, that's for DMX. Or you can't have that, that's for Mace. And he's like, do you know them? It's like, no, but that's for them though. How the hell could Pharrell fail with that mentality? Mm. Think about that. How could he fail? He was a new guy saying, no, nah, I can't give you that. I know you want it, but I got another vision for that. That is what I mean. He knew who he was. He committed to the character. He did not waver. Bro, I don't give a fuck if they offer me right now the CEO job of Dev Jam. Shout out to Tunji because he's the CEO. But I'm just using that because that is the dream job for every black man that grew up in hip hop. Right? I would say no. But you can turn that down now. You got two matches. You got a condo around the Yeah, corner. but I still, but but it's not that, that's, but I mean, you, you still want the money. It's some good money. It's probably the most money you'll make from a job ever. Like, I would love the money, but what's the one thing we can't replace? Time. Mm -hmm. I know how much of my time they're going to require. I'm going to lose myself in the job that I can't control the outcome of. Mm. Why the fuck would I do that to myself? I'm smarter than that. I'm smarter than that. Why would I do that to myself? No. No. I'm, I actually would rather show you who I think you should hire. I'd rather that. I don't want that job. I don't want the job. And I did for a long time. But God was like, which one, which one do you want? Because a lot of us are just waiting for a door to open. He's like, which door do you want to open? And I was like, media. That's what I want to win in. As soon as I said that, I swear to God, Jay, as soon as I said that, it was like deals was coming out of nowhere. Because he was like, I'll give you what you want. You just got to make a decision. Mm. So I said that, it started coming out of nowhere. So I still obviously got to honor my wife, which is music. But this girlfriend of my media, I love this bitch. And bro, I'm going to help her. Like, I can't wait till I can marry her because media is the future. But you told us how you got here. The old job lets you go. You say, I'm going to sit down on the camera. But how are you so sure that you, you love it so much? Love what? Media. Because it's me. In media, I can be the star. I can be the brand. I control it. Imagine, like, bro, I'm, it's, the time it is right now, I'm supposed to be home with my kids. I'm here. Now imagine if I had an artist that was like, I need to be home with my kids. I ain't coming to do no damn interview. Nah, nigga, you better show up. That's how I look at it. Like, I do the job. But I love media because I believe media is the future. I believe it, I believe media control media controls the world. Like, look at this shit, bro. Like, as soon as a video of Puff gets released and through the media, the game changes. His whole perception of his whole legacy just changed. Mm. That's how powerful media is. Media tells us how to think. Media tells us what to be mad at, what we should care about, why we should care. Look at this whole shit with the the um the Gaza. Uh, um, the the Palestinian college students protesting. The media is exposing itself because you got kids protesting on colleges and they're like, let them, them bastards need to leave. And it's like, oh, we know whose side y'all are on. Mm -hmm. well, that's not how America was, but we know, but we also know controlled media. And we're telling us these fucking kids are devils and they're evil. And I'm like, why? I'm not saying you're wrong, but can you tell us why? And that's why I think they're losing it. Because now people are like, those are kids. And then never in America, in, in modern America, not maybe the 60s, but never in America have we ever called kids fighting for rights evil people. Mm. Usually the kids that fight for rights are on the right side of history. Whether it was the 60s, think about it. Anytime a protesting, it was the right side of history. They're protesting, they're like, they're some evil people. Why? Because they don't have influence over the media. That's why media controls the world. So I want to be a controller of how the world thinks. I don't want the world to tell me how to think. I want to tell the world how to think. Mm. I think that I think in a way, a unique way that can make a lot of people successful, especially people that look like me and you. Yeah, I'm curious, when, when all this is said and done, like what do you want to be known for? I'm just curious. <sighs> um, 
What do you want your legacy to be? I want to be. It's this movie. Um, I was referred to a movie. It's this movie called Pleasantville. Um, the movie starts off in black and white. The entire movie is in black and white. And then this woman enters the town, and she's in color. Everybody else in black and white. And everything she touched turned to color. Mm. And everything that they touched turned to color. And the movie starts off black and white, and it ends in color. I want to be that character to the world. I want everything I touch to be better and, 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 and better to your family, better to your kids, better to your wives, better to your husbands, better to each other, graceful each other. I want to bring that element to it because we can all help each other, but we ain't going to help each other. We don't talk to each other. We can't talk to each other. We close minded and think that we're the only ones that know. So we have to talk to each other. So to me, I want my legacy to be after Ray, we thought about it. Ray made us think about how we did things. And now we do things like this and it's better for all of us. So to me, that's my goal, to make the world better. My father died. My father died. I'll never forget my father died. He had my name, Raymond Daniels. I remember I was 22. I'll never get crying. I remember just looking around at the wake and everybody was just like, you know, his friends, family, just enjoying themselves. Like, how you doing? And I'm like, my father is right here. This man made me, he's here dead. Mm. I remember thinking like, I remember I never forget, I, I got on my knees because, you know, you could talk to the body and I touched his body and I said, I promise you, you don't have to worry about Michael, Tiffany, or Raymond. Or Michael, Tiffany, or Lorraine, my mother. And at the time, my niece. You, have, you can rest in peace, Dad. I got him. And I promise you, when I go, it's going to mean something. Mm -hmm. Your name going to mean something in the end. And that was my goal. So when people say, Ray Dan, Ray, it, 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 it makes me, my heart smile because it's my dad's name. And that's the only person I'm doing it for. My legacy. Mm. So you would say, that's your why? My dad dying was my why. My dad dying is my motivation. My dad dying is everything that I am. I worked at Delta. September 11th happens. When September 11th happens, Delta tells everybody, I'm 21 years old, Delta tells everybody, don't come to work. Airlines like, go, just leave. So I was like, maybe this is my sign. So I left. Because I was trying to be in the music, and I was like, you know what, let me try it. I left. And then Delta calls me back to work two months later. Like, airline she picked up. You got to come back to work. And I'm like, take care of my sick dad. So my dad had HIV. And he was like, just use me as an example. So I used him. My dad dies April 3rd, 2022. March 3rd, I'm sorry. Delta calls me April 1st because they do a monthly check-in. Every month with my dad's doctor. They call my doc dad's doctor April 1st. They say he's deceased. Delta calls me. You need to come back to work. My mother is like, he wasn't going to make it anyway. Like, go get a job. I'm like, all right, cool. So I go back to Delta and, you know, I'm like, you know what, Ray? Maybe, maybe that's not your dream. Maybe you're not meant to be that. And then it was like, boom, it hit me. Ray, if Bill Cosby was your father, would you be working at Delta? No. Matter of fact, if Bill Cosby was your father, wouldn't everybody at Delta be like, why the fuck are you here? Bill Cosby's your dad. You could go do, am I right? But because my father was who he was, Delta was good enough for me. At that very moment, I quit. I went in my supervisor's job office, Philip Pryor, and I quit. I was like, I'm not going to, the world, our fathers determine how far we go in life. Whether he's in our life or he's not in our life. And at that moment, our father it determines the expectations. Look at Bronny. Everybody want Bronny to win because his father. What about all the other kids that ain't got a father that's trying? I want them to win because mm. Bronny got a father. He going to be all right whether he go to the NBA or not. He's just not going to get to his dream, but he's going to be okay for the rest of his life. Mm -hmm. So for me, it was like I'm, I quit on that spot. And now people look at my son and be like, he's going to be a billionaire. You fucking right. You feel that way. You know how you feel that way? Because who his daddy is. So, yo, you you reference um, media being your girlfriend or a side piece or whatever, but yeah. music man like your wife. Yep. Why 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 that reference? The wife pays the bills. <laughs> 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 Dog, I from music. I made more money this year from music. We are in what May? I made more money from January first, two thousand twenty four to today than I would have made if I stayed at Delta for 25 years mm. from music. 
Yeah. Besides the check, what do you think it means to you? Well, Gotta hold some type of special part in your heart. No, not no more because I'm good at it. Mm. I'm great at it. I'm really good at it. Like, I'm not lying to you. Like, if we sat and talked music, you'll be like, God damn. Like, I'm, I'm really the best at it. So, but I'm the best at it because I worked at it. Like I told you, everybody I looked up to, looked up to L.A. Reid. I want to learn from L.A. Reid. Dr. Luke, the biggest producer, I got more hits than everybody. I went to go work with him. I was a student. I challenged them the way a student was, but I knew I was a student. I didn't think I was their partner. I was a student. So here I am at this place. Like Teron, my partner, Teron is 42 years old. And he's the biggest writer in the world. Black writers don't, black people don't hit their peak in their 40s in music. Nigga, Michael Jackson, Prince, all of them by the time he was 40s was at the end. Why is he so good at 40? Because when he was on top, instead of enjoying being on top, he said, let me come down here and go to college. And that's what we did. We learned from the greats. Mm. So now we could do this shit into our 50s if we want. Because we understand the science of making hit records. Yeah, you made the post about uh, the music, about old people making music. Mm -hmm. um, what, what exactly did it say? Well, I was speaking on, I was like basically songwriter of the year. I was 41 years old. For, um, it's right when Killer Mike won. Killer Mike won. The, so, the so, best rap album was for 48 year old rapper, featured a 40 year old rapper and another 50 year old rapper. Like, like, it's no more rules to this. Just focus on making, like, that's what I mean by community. Like, music used to be a young man's game because the only time you can get to somebody was through MTV, BET, or radio, or publications. Now, nigga, you got music artists that's, that, that's making millions of dollars that don't even care about radio. NBA Youngboy ain't never had a song on the radio, and he's making millions of dollars. Like, it's about community, 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 community. Instead of trying to get a million streams, get a thousand people to spend a thousand dollars with you a year, and you just made a million dollars. Mm. Community, community. That's all you need. Yo, I uh, I left a lot of we could talk. I left a lot of stuff out far as music wise because we still gotta do another another. We're gonna part we're gonna do of course we're gonna do another one. Yeah, for sure. so this is like if you think th this is just part one, we're gonna just name this part one. Yep. I appreciate you, brother. Uh, you you got the book coming soon. Um, when I wrote a book. Um, that's what I'm saying. Like even that, <laughs> I wrote a book. I paid a ghostwriter a nice amount of money to write the book for me, and um. It's funny because, I, by the way, I love my, I love Elena, love her, because we talked on the phone for like four or five days, you know, three, two, three hours each day, and she wrote what I said, and I read it, and I was like, that's not how I talk, and she was like, well, I'm trying to, I can't, so she, I was like, let me do it, so I wound up writing pretty much ninety percent of the book myself, mm -hmm. and she was kind of like overseeing me because it was like I remember I, when I wrote the book, I remember. I was just trying to lay, because the book is called The Artist Agreements, right? And this, if the biggest book in the music industry is a book called Everything You Need to Know About the Music Business. My book is the prequel to that. Mm. My book is the book that shows anybody who wants to be an entertainment how to win. Podcasts, music, but I wrote it to artists. And I ain't gonna lie, man, outside of my kids, I think it's the greatest thing I've ever done. And it's funny because I'm in the middle of my publishing deal right now, and I got and my publishing agent is like, "Yo, you know, it's not a lot." And I'm like, "I'm gonna sell 10 million books. I don't even worry about it. You can't tell me this not gonna work. I know my market. Y'all don't know my market. That's why y'all don't understand the importance of it. I do though. I know I'm gonna sell a million books. You can't tell me I'm not. Yeah. Dog, I'm giving everyone who wants to win the blueprint on how to win." I tell you, the first, the first agreement, second agreement, third agreement, fourth agreement. If you follow those agreements, you will not lose. In every agreement, I tell you what you need to do to win. It's, I mean, I ain't gonna lie, man. It's brilliant. It's funny because my, my writer, she told me, she said, Ray, I've written about 70 books in my life. This is the only book I've ever written that changed my life. You made me look at myself differently. That's what the book does. It makes you see yourself. Mm. It's fire. Yo, we wait. supposed to be wrapping up. I'm just curious. Yeah. You just said this. I'm sorry. I I'm sorry. I got to ask sure. you a question. Because you mentioned your family multiple yeah. times. You have how many kids you got? Well, I I have two biological, but I my lady has two, so it's four. Yo, I that's, that's crazy. You just walked me into the question. I just had my first daughter, biological daughter. I have a, step, a, a bonus daughter. Yeah. Um, And the only reason I didn't call them my daughters, because I respect that they father's still active men in their okay, life. Okay. But they mine. Yeah, so that's what I was going to ask because like, 
I love my bonus. Congratulations, like, man. No, thank you. I love like I love her for sure. It's my first time ever being yeah. like introduced to fatherhood. Yeah. And um, I'm not gonna lie though, bro. Like uh, my 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 daughter is nine months. Yeah. And I never felt nothing like that in my life, bro. It's incredible, right? Yeah, but yeah. so much so it's kind of like I could feel the difference in love. Some yes, and I, I like I don't know. I, I don't want that yeah. to be like that, right? But I was just wondering from a father. <laughs> From a father standpoint, when I hear you mention your your, your kids, like yeah. outside of my kids, the yeah. best thing to happen. I'm like, bro, my daughter yeah. is the best thing, and I always speak like that. Yeah. And sometimes I I feel like it might make my my bonus daughter uncomfortable. No, 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 no. It's it's it's. I understand where you're coming from, and to be honest with you, like I said, I, I said I have two, but we we have four because, like, when I bought our uh, seventeen, well, she's nineteen now. When I bought Jada her car at seventeen. Like on her 17th birthday, or I could have easily bought the car, but the entire time I kept her father in the mix. Mm. I was sending him pictures. Which one you like? I said, I'm gonna give it to it. Like she was at a dinner with her father when I surprised her with the car. And everybody was like, why would you do that? I'm like, why the fuck wouldn't I? Like, I don't, I'm not competing with him. That's, he loves her. I love her. Why wouldn't I want her? the greatest? thing that happened to her for him not to be there to witness it and take a picture with her bro I'm not that type of nigga bro I'm confident I'm confident in who I am as a man and I but I do I love them and I love their mother but bro you don't have to like you're different you're in a unique scenario because you became a stepfather before you became a real father mm. so it's like how does your bonus daughter She's about to be 15 and older. Okay, so see what I'm saying? So she's also older. So how long you and the mother been together? Uh, like seven years. About okay. seven years. Okay, so she had eight years of her life without you. Mm -hmm. So she knows what life is like without you. Like, not saying she probably remembers, she loved it, but she knows what life's like without you. And she also remember what life, what life was like before her daughter, her little sister came. So it's going to always be love. Just take care of them the same, love them the same, and... Don't let the world make you feel like one is different than the other, cause they they love each other. They 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 this, mm. so you can't get one without the other. But nah, I won't. Nah, bro. You, Yo, I just never. Nah. I never forget the moment I saw my daughter come out, bro. It's it is being a bro. I say this to anybody: if being a father don't change you, you are a fuck nigga. Mm -hmm. If being a father has not changed you, you are a fuck nigga. Mm. Send me that motherfucking clip. I have to put that out. Yo, I feel like people, because people told me this and I didn't understand it. People were like, bro, it's going to change. I'm like, bro, I got to love it the same way. I got to pay the bills. Don't nothing change me, bro. Because I'm like, bro, I'm still going to be a provider. Nothing changes. Literally nothing changes. But the moment I saw her look at me, bro. I can't feel her. I can't, I can't even, dog, I couldn't imagine feeling my kids. Mm. I mean, like, dog, I couldn't imagine telling them. We're not going to make it today because mm. daddy failed. Nigga, please. Nigga, the whole world will be destroyed before I let them down. And the world ain't going nowhere. So they ain't getting let down. Mm. Simple as that. I, I, and I want more in the next couple of years. Like, I want two more. Like, I, I want to also adopt, too. Like, I, lo I, I love kids because kids keep us young. Kids keep us young. Kids keep us. Kids, keep, bro, kids remind us what the world is about. Mm. And to me, it's like. I don't say if your kid ain't changed you, you's a fuck nigga. Oh my God. Mm, mm, mm. As, and by the way, if a daughter, and it goes deeper, if you having a daughter mm, mm. doesn't change you, because I have a son. But girls, man, dog, I don't, I'm not home. Like, this is the latest I've been out all week. I'm always home early because I want to see my daughter and give her a kiss goodnight. Mm, mm. Always. Like, my son, he was my little man, but my daughter, oh my God, I'm obsessed. I can't wait. To, I, I'm, I'm texting her like, "Hold on, right? I hope she's up when I get there." Like, I just I can't wait till summer starts so they can stay up with me all night. What? I love my kids. Mm. That's good, bro. I appreciate you, brother. This is a great conversation. Give her, uh, be prepared for part two, bro. We're gonna do this again. Yeah, part two. And, and, and by the way, part two, we gonna talk about music, music for sure. And when you see the music, you gonna be like, "Okay, this nigga really is like you really want to want because I." I make it make sense. It's I, funny because I really just like, I like music for sure. Yeah. It's just, I love to get to know people, bro. Me like, too. Who Me are too. you but behind? What's your why? What's your motivation? Yeah. Like, what made you, how'd you make up what you are? How'd you get to where you are? 
Mm. Like, dog, man, we all elite, man. It's such a beautiful world we live in now. I hate when people say, podcasts need to stop. Man, shut the fuck up. I say every person in America should have a podcast. Mm -hmm. and by the way, we all do it on social media, but I think everybody should have a podcast because I don't care if you sell car insurance. Talk about it. Like, dog, I built my, last thing, I built my, not my mom's house. I built the pool I built. Never built a pool in my life. I'm from the hood. How much does a pool even cost? Like, shit, you know, you know what I'm saying? So I'm like, of course, I'm like, let me meet with some people about building the pool. So, dog, I meet with like eight companies. And like everybody was like, the kind of pool you want, it's going to cost you anywhere between $20,000 and about $60,000. So I was like, well, shit, I'm trying to get this bitch for $20,000. <laughs> you know me, of course. And I had this guy come to my house. Never forget. I forgot his name. But he came to my house to talk about a pool. Mind you, he's like the fifth guy. Man, this nigga told me, I hope you don't have any meetings set up. I need two hours of your time. What? Nigga, I'm trying to buy a pool, my nigga. What the fuck are you talking about, my nigga? Like, I don't have a hundred people coming in here. And he was like, I have to teach you about what your man, dog. This man sat us down and made a presentation, gave us every piece of information. And I said, I don't care how much it costs. I want you to build my That's house. fire. That's life. Mm, mm, mm. I, it wanted to cost me 65K, but it was because he cared so much about it. Mm. He literally is like, he said, I, I only I work for Delta full time. I do this part time because I built a, a pool for my kids and seeing the joy my, on their faces. I want to give every family that joy. So that's why I sell pools. I'm like, damn. Bro, it's, bro, it's, if you have anything you want to do, you should be talking about it. Mm. You shouldn't be talking to people about you shouldn't be trying to sell to people just talk about it mm. i told you all the kids want to meet gary v why because he talks about winning and like i want to meet him now they want to meet me and i would appreciate that because i can actually show you how to win in music a little different than gary by the way shout out to gary v i fuck with him i'm a fan of his bro this is great that's all we got man let's go j hill j hill podcast oh man the amazing ray daniels everybody it's a wrap we out